You're listening to the Plane Talking UK podcast, the UK-based podcast written by a passenger for anyone. And here are your hosts, Carlos Devings, Matt Smith and Neville Bounds. Well, hello and welcome to episode number 187 of the Plane Talking UK podcast. I'm Carl Stebbings and joining me live in the kitchen studio, as always this week, he's back, my co-host <laughs> Matt Smith. Hello, hello. Did you miss me? <laughs> Just a little bit last week. Yeah, okay. to be fair, I did have rather a mare. Did you? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's ca- that's comforting to know. It's nice to know that you you know, you know do miss me when I'm not here. D- 100%. <laughs> yeah. I actually, okay. I don't know whether you saw Matt, but at the end of the show, I've done a little Facebook live video thing. Oh, just, did you? Just, yeah. Oh, no, and, I didn't uh, see that. Just to give the guys in, you know, who, who follow us on Facebook a kind of behind-the-scenes view of how stressed I was. <laughs> oh, were you really that stressed? <laughs> oh, With dear. everything. Because I was sitting here, you see, if you're on YouTube yeah, watching yeah, yeah. that, I was sitting here, you see, where Matt is now, and... Um, yeah, it was. Uh, it was. Just a, it, it was. Yeah, it's all right. If it's any consolation, we are having some issues at the moment because your camera has just gone offline. So, oh, it's, is it? uh, oh, but it's all right. Okay. It's there. Okay. It's there again now. So uh, we can't. We can't have the listeners not being able to see. Oh, no. He says that sounds amazing. Anyway, so joining us as well this week uh, is the third part of our wheel. The third yes. part of the team are. Other illustrious co host. That Mr. sounds horrible. Never even call him a wheel. <laughs> what kind of introduction? No, we are all part of a Third wheel. part of a wheel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, you fool. I'm going to make you go back to school. That's what I'm going to do. You're going to yeah, learn well. grammar and everything. It's going to be brilliant. We're from the east coast of the UK. What more <laughs> okay. can I say? Oh, right. So, welcome okay. on to the show, uh, Sir Neville Bounds. Hello, folks. How are you doing? And uh, yeah, great to be back on the show. And it's uh, been a long week. Uh, but uh, yeah, very much looking forward to it today and uh, talking with you about uh, all the stuff we've got to talk about. I know, yeah, busy, old show, busy old show, busy old show. And as, as you can probably yeah. see, those of you who are watching on the old uh, YouTube, you can probably see there's a couple of people that have joined Nev in the <laughs> Skype window this week. Uh, we're going to deal with the one on the right, first of all. That's no good to you if you're listening, obviously. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting on a sun lounger looking very uncomfortable, oh. it has to be said. Uh, and it gives us great pleasure to welcome, uh, what I, I'm proud to say, our, our friend and our host uh, at the Pittsburgh Air Show is the legend that is Captain Rick Bell. Hello, sir. Hey guys, how are you? It's uh, great to be here in uh, sunny Punta Cana oh, in the I Dominican know. Republic after uh, a nice round of golf this morning with oh, uh, my dad and uh, now uh, just relaxing by the pool and looking at the beautiful blue ocean and uh, with a drink in my hand, what could be better? Right, <laughs> absolutely. Well, this is what we like to hear, you see. This is, this is the way forward. So you're, you're having some well-earned holiday. That's essentially what's happening there, is it? Absolutely, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, I don't know if it's well earned or not, but definitely, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely yeah. enjoyed. Definitely sure, enjoyed. So. Absolutely. So, uh, as I say, unfortunately, Rick isn't able to join us for very long, but he will join us for a, for a, a proper show uh, later on. But uh, yeah, we we couldn't allow him to enjoy the Sun Lounger alone, so uh, <laughs> we thought we'd better to join join in. So the um, we'll come back to what everybody's up to uh, very momentarily. But obviously, there's one more person that we need to introduce, and I'm a bit scared about what he's up to there because he's just put something on his head, uh, and it is. <laughs> Uh, normally, as I say, usually I say it's a great pleasure to welcome uh, uh, Pilot Pip, but uh, I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, everything all right, sir? You, you're not looking yourself today. <laughs> I, mean, I, I need a haircut, to be honest. Right. No, I'm all right. How okay. Good. Yes, I, I'm, I'm splendid. I'm, what, where what on has, earth did you get that from? What has, what has the Phenom 300 done to you? Yeah, Pip? indeed. Absolutely. These are great. The stuff you can find in Walmart. Well, this Why is true. Why don't Tesco's do these? <laughs> It's a good point because it's the wrong chain, but you never know. You might find them in Asda. Uh, <laughs> are, are you, I'm, I'm guessing you're, you're taking that home for uh, Isaac. Yeah, we saw these in uh, Walmart when we were here back in August, and uh, I thought we've got to have those, but we couldn't <laughs> fit them in the suitcase. Oh, um, that is so they are amazing. Anyway. Hello, everyone from Columbus, Ohio. Ah, Ooh, I know it's all—it's all very, as I say, very well showed. I know, well well, absolutely, yes. Yeah, so we've got—we've got Nev in the nice part of the country. Yeah, us stuck at the back end of nowhere, yes. and then <laughs> and then Pippin. Oh, wait, where did he say? Ohio. Columbus, Ohio, and then, oh, and then nice. Rick's Columbus, in a lovely okay. part of the world, and Dominican Republic, yeah. indeed. So, um, yeah, so we're going. Oh, hello, and there it was. The video went. It, it, it was all going so well. Um, uh, Pip, we're we're hopefully going to catch up with you next week for a for a chat because we want we want to talk about the the new plane of course you had to go on the sim now haven't you that's right yeah i've only got 20 minutes tops maybe even less today or if you want to kick me off now you can that's fine no, um, that's i've got fine. a sim session starting 
uh, shortly. We've got a, it's a 20 minute drive across to the uh, Columbus wow. Airport. Yeah. Is that a full uh, full motion sim, Pip? It is, yeah. Uh, usual Cat D full motion sim. It's uh, good fun. Still um, getting used to it, still trying to find out where all the buttons are. The buttons seem to move around each time I need to film one. It's in a different position. <laughs> okay, I bet. So we've got like a big emergency going on. I'm going, ah, oh, where's that button gone? Where is it? <laughs> that's, that's, there that's it is. Very comforting. All you have to yeah. remember, Pip, is the red one. Yeah, the red one. The red one, yeah. Right. yeah. The big okay. one that says do not press. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, yeah, maybe not. So we're going we're gonna to talk in more detail about uh, that when you're on next, perhaps, because, uh, yeah, it'll be fascinating yeah. to see how that compares to, to the lovely... Uh, the hawker. The little hawker that obviously little. I dare say you miss uh, <laughs> very much. Terribly. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I can imagine. More and more each day. Okay, Indeed. So, so welcome everyone who's joined us in the chat room. Loads and loads of... There's loads of people in the chat room Well, of course. Loads of it's because they know we've got celebrities on. Liz, Liz Piper <laughs> was in there about three hours ago. Uh, so hello to you, Liz. Mariana, Tony S... Uh, we've got uh, Mashes in the chat room, Mark Harvey, Lane Street, First Officer Mike, Tom Thomas, um, scrolling down the list here, Jordan Rose, hello to you Jordan Rose, uh, did I say Marsha? Yes, I did say Marsha, Jeff Braithwaite, oh, wow. um, so um, it's Richard King, right, yes, yes. there was a full King. old chat room, and, and, and chat no room. Rick Bell, Tony S. but there we are, <laughs> no, <laughs> Neville Bounds is in there as well, is he, he's, yes. yeah. uh, is, he's our blue spanner of death I think for this week, uh, isn't is he? he our blue spanner of death, I think so, yeah he is, yeah. yes, he is our well, blue spanner yeah. of death yes. for this yes, week, yes absolutely, yeah. yes, so, uh, so welcome to everyone who's joined us in the chat room, indeed, so we're going to gonna let our, uh, our, um, our busy people uh, disappear in just a moment, so uh, uh, what, what plans have you got uh, forthcoming when you return home? Uh, Sir, uh, Sir Rick, sorry, I'm <laughs> Sir Rick, <laughs> Mr. Bell. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, how, how long have Captain. you got left of your uh, of your vacation? Yeah, we uh, head out tomorrow. Uh, oh. So the six of us is my uh, my in laws, my, my my father and father in law, and then uh, my mom and dad came down for uh, let's see, which we came down here on Saturday and uh, stayed for the week. Oh, I'm sorry, we came down here on Monday. Uh, I don't remember. And uh, we're uh, going back tomorrow. So flying uh, Delta back through Atlanta. Uh, getting back a little late. Uh, I think we land back in Cleveland around 11 o'clock or something on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. So, But it uh, gives us uh, enough time to enjoy the pool for another couple of hours Lovely. tomorrow morning before we head back towards the airport. Fantastic. Um, and then uh, quick week, actually. Uh, traveling quite a bit. Uh, next week. Uh, I'm going to a conference in uh, Orlando, Florida for the week. So Monday, Tuesday, I'm uh, in the office, and then uh, I leave Wednesday for a conference uh, until the following Sunday or Monday. So I'll be uh, uh, out traveling for uh, the next uh, mm, wow. I'll be traveling And, and next is this for day. work, he says, sort of in, in, in inverted commas? Yeah, yeah, work, yeah. absolutely. So Lovely. No, it's going to be enjoyable. This is uh, the uh, Airlift Tanker Association conference. Oh, cool. The, uh, I belong to uh, it's a kind of a um, uh, like a, an industry uh, uh, whatever you want to call that. Yeah. So yeah. have you been doing much flying of the uh, grey painted type aircraft, Rick? The grey painted. <laughs> How nice. <laughs> the grey painted. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not really. Uh, a little bit. Not as much as uh, I, I think I, I probably could be or. Um, the, the guys are all deployed right now with the, the squadron, so um, there's a, we kind of have a skeleton crew back at home here. And, uh, you know, so uh, we're just kind of keeping things um, just kind of current, I guess you could say. And uh, now our transition to C-17s has just started, uh, really started kicking off, so we're, we're really starting to lose all of our airplanes. So. Um, yeah, I see the C-130Hs um, our... are all been uh, a bit they're on the way out, Rick, the, uh, the 130H. Yeah, they sure are. Um, they're downsizing the fleet. Um, I, I don't know what the latest number is supposed to be, but uh, um, or what the number they're trying to get to. But uh, we'll see where where things go from mm -hmm. there. So, but uh, no, we're uh, we're right in the middle of starting our transition. So we'll be uh, uh, guys will be coming back. Guys will be going to school, and um, probably another year and a half we'll be full on. C1 or C17s and uh, no more C130s. 
Fantastic. Wow. Well, hopefully, Rick, we can uh, persuade you to join us uh, in a couple of weeks. Perhaps we can talk in more detail about uh, those grey things as so so many of, of our listeners <laughs> call them. But uh, thanks ever so oh, much absolutely. for joining us uh, and, and interrupting your uh, vacation. Thank you very much for popping in to say hello. Um, we're, ju- we're ignoring Pip on purpose, by the way. Anybody on watching on YouTube will know why. Uh, and uh, yes, it. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks ever so much for joining us. And enjoy the rest of your vacation, sir. Hey guys, thanks so much, and uh, absolutely, hopefully uh, we can get to do this again and cool. actually stick around for the whole show. Yeah, it'd be great. Apologize, but uh, not I have a now enjoy your holiday, right? Uh, no, indeed. Yeah, I have a pool and a uh, nice uh, umbrella. Indeed, drink waiting for me. Well, quite right, and and, and uh, <laughs> there is nothing more important in life than a sun lounger and beer, frankly. So there we yeah. are. Yeah, definitely. Indeed. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, yes, okay. Uh, cheers. Uh, right. So I'll 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 trim that there. Um, yeah, okay. Pip, anything you'd like to uh, add before we uh, we throw you out as well? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great shame that uh, Rick's got to head off to Orlando. I was going to challenge him to a, a game of golf next week if he had time, but uh, I guess you've got oh, other yeah, things man. to do. Uh, when are you around? I, I might be able to scoot down to. Um... Columbus on Sunday if uh, you're going to be around or we can meet somewhere in the middle yeah possibly mm-hmm. um, Sims are fairly late but uh, yeah maybe Ooh, okay let me know uh, Sun- yeah Sunday's a good one and let us know what the results of that game are please please yes absolutely yeah. Video oh. would be- I-, I was <laughs> expecting him to say oh that's a shame maybe another time I didn't mean <laughs> to, to accept that I suck at that <laughs> brilliant good that's what I like no, I to do I can scoot down it's, uh, it's only about an hour and a half ride for me so brilliant absolutely. Oh, yeah uh, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll run down there and hopefully Sunday maybe we can Splendid. get a, a um, round together or Monday, Tuesday after work or something like that. So s- yeah, sounds that fantastic. Uh, uh, lots of video of that, please, gentlemen. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I don't know if I don't suppose you're allowed to. Pip, are you allowed to take any photos or videos at the sim? Uh, officially not, but um, no? I'm sure okay. I could sneak a few photos. Okay. Well, nothing that's going to get you into trouble, obviously. But it'd be nice to sort of maybe maybe when when we have our chat next week, perhaps you can, uh, you know, just sort of be nice to sort of highlight it with even if just what it looks like from the outside or just or a something. picture of the yeah. red button will do. Yeah, the the red yeah, button. The one red that says do not yeah. press. Yeah. Well, there's not much to look at from the outside, but um, yeah, I, know, I was but... hoping to do a little video thing at some point anyway. Oh, but so yeah, okay. I'll see what I can do. All right, mate. Cool. Lovely. Okay. Uh, gents, uh, we'll bid you a fair dues and uh, we'll speak to you all very soon. Yeah, have a great rest of your holiday, yeah, uh, take Rick. Care, guys. Enjoy yourself. Hey, guys. Thanks so much. I'll be uh, talking to you real soon, okay? Yeah, definitely. Take care. Cheers, mate. Thank you. And uh, Pip, enjoy. Good luck. And uh, see I, ho- yeah, I hope yeah, your session everyone. goes well. We'll speak to you next week. Fly hopefully. safe. Will do. Thanks. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye-bye. Guys, see ya. Bye-bye. So we're going to start the show then as we do each week with our rundown of the weekly news from around the world and the UK. So if you're ready, Nev. I certainly am, yes. And if you're ready, so Nev. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. So, kicking off this week's first news story, then, on the DailyMail.co.uk. Oh, good. Another quality newspaper, I see. The Daily Snail, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, this is uh, another story that's cropped up again. This was in the, in the news not so long back, actually. Uh, but the headline, US calls for worldwide uh, ban on laptops in checked bags, claiming they pose a fire and explosion risk. So we've heard about this before, haven't we, with uh, batteries overheating and stuff and causing slight issues on aircraft. But the US government is urging the world airline community to ban laptops from checked luggage because of the potential for catastrophic fire. Tests show uh, when a laptop's rechargeable lithium-ion battery overheats in close proximity to an aerosol spray can. It can cause an explosion capable of disabling an airliner's fire suppression system. The Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, said in a paper filed recently with a UN agency, uh, said the fire could rage unchecked, leading to the loss of aircraft. Uh, The FAA has conducted 10 tests involving a fully charged laptop packed in a suitcase. Uh, A heater was placed against the laptop battery to force it into thermal runway uh, or runaway, a condition in which the battery's temperature continually rises. In one test, an 8-ounce aerosol can of dry shampoo, 
dry shampoo, which is permitted in check baggage, was strapped to the laptop. There was a fire almost immediately, and it grew rapidly, and then the aer aerosol can exploded within 40 seconds. The test showed that because of the rapid progression of the fire, um, the uh, halon gas fire suppression systems used by airline cargo compartments would be unable to put out the fire before there was an explosion, the FAA said. The explosion might not be strong enough to structurally damage the aircraft, but it could damage the cargo compartment and allow the halon to escape, the agency said. Uh, then there would be nothing to prevent a fire from spreading to the rest of the aircraft. Other tests of laptop batteries packed with potentially dangerous consumer goods that are permitted in check baggage like nail polish remover, hand sanitizer and rubbing alcohol also resulted in large fires, although no explosions. As a result, the paper recommends that the passengers shouldn't be allowed to pack large electronic devices in baggage unless they have specific approval from the airline. The UN agency, uh, the International Civil Aviation Organization, sets global aviation safety standards, although member countries must still ratify them. Uh, the proposed ban is on the agenda of a meeting of the ICAO's panel on dangerous goods being held this week uh, and next week in Montreal. Uh, the paper says the European Safety Agency, the FAA's counterpart in Europe, Airbus, one of the world's largest makers of passenger aeroplanes, the International Federation of Airline Pilots Association and the International Coordinating Council of Aerospace Industries Association, which represents aircraft makers, concurred in the recommendation. The paper doesn't address what sh uh, which uh, the ban or whether the ban should extend to domestic flights, but points out the risk that baggage containing large electronic devices could be transferred from one flight to another without the knowledge of the airline. The FAA said it believes most uh, devices larger than a smartphone are already being carried uh, by passengers in the cabin rather than being put in check bags. Rechargeable lithium, uh, lithium iron batteries are used in consumer products ranging from cell phones, laptops, electric cars. Don't quite know why you'd want one of those on an aircraft. <laughs> Manufacturers like yes. them because they pack more energy into smaller packages, but the batteries can self ignite if they have a manufacturing flaw. Uh, or are damaged or exposed to excessive heat or overcharged or packed too closely together. Of course, you've, now, only, Matt, got to mention the, uh, you, you've only got to mention the word Samsung, really, and of course that whole note thing. Uh, I mean, we've been running the video while you've been talking that about how this, that, and there's quite an explosion when it first ignites, it has to be said. So that would count, then, as my uh, my booster pack charge that I've got as well, uh, would be... Um, yes and no. Quite a lithium Yes and no, but it's a much, much uh, bigger... Sell. It depends, this thing again, here. It's, it's what... It's, y you get what you pay for. That's the long and the short of it, I think. Uh, Nev, I don't know if, if, if you agree with me on that. A lot of it is actually more about build quality uh, rather than the technology itself. I mean, if you buy one of these cheap um, yeah. things, they, they are prone to not being great. Uh, it, that's very much the case. And also, I think the other thing is with phones, of course, people want them to charge quickly as well. So the way that the lithium-ion batteries are made in for those and also for laptops differs slightly uh, from one product to another, I think. But uh, no, it, it's certainly a big... Uh, Big problem, and uh, th this problem just won't go away, will it? It's terrible. No, I don't think it will. I don't think it will. I, I, I mean, there is a there. I'm going to say the word. There is only one obvious solution to this, and that is that you're not allowed to take them with you. Mm. Or there needs to be um, a, some kind of some kind of containment um, capsule or case canister that cases are packed. The trouble into is, if you get one battery car. that goes, then mm. you're going to lose everything that's in that pod mm. i mean i guess that's better than than it bringing the airplane out mm. of the sky but because i mean uh, neville know this in larger aircraft the larger you know like the 747s and the larger uh, aircraft the uh, suitcases are generally packed into containers aren't they nev yeah that's right which yes. are then loaded well, so... onto the aircraft Mm. Uh, but um, no, I, I think this is going to be a discussion which is going to be on, ongoing by all the safety authorities because this is, there's been uh, far too many instances of, of this sort of thing. And uh, obviously, with laptop batteries getting more and more powerful in, in terms of their capacity and, and the way that they're charged, um, this thermal runaway uh, is very dangerous indeed. There is no way of uh, putting it out quickly at all. That's no. the other problem. Once it's ignited, you're mm. you're in a lot of trouble, yeah. aren't you? Basically. I don't know. I mean, what is what is the solution? I mean, even my phone, you know, when I've charged this up at home from flat, you know, it does get a little bit warm when it's charging, whether that's mm. a 
issue with the phone. I hope not, because it's a new phone. But um, yeah. yeah, even that gets a little bit warm to touch. You are so. you are you are prone to not getting what I call noted brands. Of phone. though, and that <laughs> and that could be. And all jokes aside, though, I mean that could that could be an issue. All, all jokes aside, I mean there's a reason why people like mine. I say Samsung, but of course, obviously they're they're the famous one that's now, had. Yeah. The, but they're the fa- they're the mm. most famous for having a dodgy battery, aren't they? Was but it they're the still Note, better than I think iPhone. It was <coughs> the Note. <laughs> note eight, note yeah, whichever uh, one it note, was, the note something, did, which yeah. um, was a bit disastrous. But uh, uh, and, Mark and Harvey, me, me are never going to say something here that you're that you're uh, not going to agree go. with. <laughs> you don't get these kind of quality issues with an Apple, do you, sir? <laughs> No, but it, mine does. Uh, my iPhone six S does get a little bit warm when it's oh. charging, uh, certainly from the mains. But I've never had uh, um, any other concern about it. Uh, okay. Really, the Mark Harvey of... said in the chat room that he's seen an advert for bags that contain a thermal runaway. Oh, really? Yeah. So you can oh, okay. apparently you can buy them. Yeah. That's so if you put your own device in a bag that contains a thermal that that suppression it contains, thing, yeah, then yeah. maybe maybe that's the solution is actually make everybody if you want to take it on the airplane you must sit supply in a, it in, in a, a flame certified bag. flame proof bag. I don't well, know. not us sit in a bag, but <laughs> the phone. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, moving, moving on, on to the next yes, story. Okay. I'm so glad you're here, Matt, this week because this obviously we're back to standard again. R- what's that? What? <laughs> Well, it's obviously your story next. Right, okay. And it's a story I'm not sure I agree with anyway, but there we are. So this is Ryan Eyre. Oh, this is true. Uh, <laughs> so are you sure? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I want this. In, I'm not sure I believe this. Anyway, we're sticking with the Mail Online, which is why I'm dubious about this particular headline. And it says, Ryan Eyre begs ex-pilots who deserted the airline to return as it promises them significant changes in a 20% pay rise. And... Uh, uh, anybody who's ever listened to anything to do with Ryanair is not sure that begging is something that's necessarily <laughs> possible from certain members of the team. Ryanair has pleaded with pilots who have deserted the struggling airline to come back. That's not true. They are not struggling. I'm sorry. They're not struggling. Anyway, the, the budget airline has repeatedly denied a shortage or has p- repeatedly Sorry, this I've got a new I've got a new laptop, ladies and gentlemen, which I know is very exciting Ooh. to those of you who listen to the show. But I'm struggling with the touchpad, if I'm <laughs> honest. So it's just That's like, why I use yeah, I know, I know. And you're now a smart ass, and I'm not. Mm. Sorry, the the budget airline. That's what she said. The uh, budget airline has repeatedly denied that a shortage of pilots has prompted it to cancel around 700,000 flight bookings and more than 20,000 flights over this winter. It also dismissed claims that disgruntled pilots have been leaving in droves and said that it has been swamped by applications but last night it emerged that the airline is desperately trying to get former pilots to return former pilots what as in they're ex-pilots mm-hmm. they can no longer fly an aeroplane they are no, no, no. Right, okay. um, it, also, it also dismissed claims that the disgruntled pilots have been leaving in droves and said that it had been swamped by applications but last night it emerged that the airline is desperately trying to get former pilots to return stressing the pay and working conditions have improved since they left the airline has emailed former Ryanair pilots and is also targeting pilots from other airlines including Jet2 and Norwegian on career networking sites mm. Uh, In an email seen by the Daily Mail, Ryanair's uh, operation manager Elaine Griffin says, I hope you are keeping well since you left Ryanair. She describes the significant changes that are taking place at Ryanair, including a pay rise of around 20% for pilots and first officers, as well as significantly in significantly increased resources in pilot rostering, contr- crew control, bases management and training. She concludes, if you are interested in having a conversation about returning to Ryanair, we would be delighted to hear from you. Please let me know if you are open to a conversation on this or if you have any specific queries. I, and I will give you a call. One Ryanair captain who has worked at the airline for almost a decade, decade says this just shows how desperate they are to recruit pilots and stop the exodus. It's not about money that pe- it's not about the money that people are after. It's modern. It's up to it's an up to date contract. The airline is also targeting pilots at rival airlines on career networking website LinkedIn. In one message, the airline pilot recruiter Darren Kinsella writes, "With our improved pay deals, our captains can earn." 26% more than Jet 2 and 20% more than Norwegian. I'm going to read I'm going to leave the story there because we get the gist basically. This this was covered by quite a few ta- different tabloids and different news channels online not just um the Daily Mail and from what I read in through quite a lot of the stories which two of them were actually sent in by pilots that have left Ryanair um both of those pilots went to fly with Norwegian. 
Really? Um, purely because they were on nearly double the amount of pay um, oh, okay. a year for flying. Wow. So I mean, you know, that's it's quite a jump, isn't it? It is quite a jump, and it, it's obvious. You know, if 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 you're doing a job, you know, f- say for you, Matt, you know, your ex coach driving, although you have been known to drive a coach recently <coughs> um so yeah you're right you, you know you're What's driving that supposed to be nothing at all um so you're <laughs> okay. driving a coach and you're being paid you know x amount of money if someone comes up to you and said we'll pay you double you know you, you you're probably gonna go aren't you really i'm probably gonna go back yeah yeah so uh yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it's you know what do you think nev well i think the thing is that uh it's all about the the market opportunities isn't it and, and the, the situation that people find themselves in and uh, I, I think there's there's always going to be some uh, controversy surrounding um, Ryanair and the, and the way that it employs uh, its pilots and, and this kind of thing. There's very few and its cabin crew has employed. to be said. <laughs> mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, whether they're employed directly by the airline or through a contract agency, I think um, this has highlighted some problems there. So I think everybody's going to have to move on from this and and, and get it sorted out. Otherwise, it'll, the problems just won't go away. Like that. It's going to mm. get on and on and on, isn't it? So moving mm. on to the next story, and uh, this one's for you, Nev, and I can't stop itching Well, at the moment, so carry on, Nev. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, just, funny, I've just got a bit of a scratch myself. Uh, but uh, this is um, on the uh, independent website, and it says that British Airways has apologised after passengers on a long-haul flight were bitten by bedbugs. Oh, no. Canadian... Yeah, Canadian Heather Shilagi uh, was travelling with her fiancé and daughter from Vancouver to London last month when she says she saw a bug crawling out from her TV screen on the back of the seat in front of her. Uh, Shilagi, who works in the hotel industry, why that's relevant, I have no idea, (laughs) recognised it as a bed bug immediately, she told CTV Vancouver. I wanted to grab it, but they're quick, and it crawled back inside behind the screen, she said. She saw more bugs later on in the flight, including as they were served, being served their in-flight meals. Uh, Shilagi uh, alerted a flight attendant, she says, but was told that the plane was full and there was no way to move the group. The flight attendant apologised, she said, but didn't seem surprised. It was nine hours of knowing that I was probably going to get bit, but not being sure, Shilagi said. Uh, but there wasn't really anything I could do about it. And uh, the trio who were en route to Slovenia via London tried to sleep. I was surprised and I was able to relax. But what can you do? Uh, Shilagi told CTV. On arrival in Slovenia the following day, she says that they were covered in bites and she still has an infected one from the front from the flight. Desperate not to be put on the same plane for the return flight, the group called British Airways to check their return details, but they were unable to get through due to busy lines. In desperation, Shilagi tweeted BA with pictures of the bites. And the airline has apologised and upgraded the family to business class for the return flight. Uh, BA said in a statement, British Airways operates more than 280,000 flights every year and reports of bed bugs on board are extremely rare. Nevertheless, we are vigilant and continually monitor our aircraft. And a a member of the cabin crew for a major European airline told the Independent, fortunately, after flying for over 20 years, I have only come across bed bugs on flights three times. I had to dose up on antihistamines once to stop the itching as I had been bitten so badly. But an aircraft is often treated if several reports of bed bugs are made. Well, it's just one of those things, isn't it? And it might have come from a, a passenger uh, who boarded the aircraft. Very well, true. this is the thing. Is it's more likely, a, to, yeah. more likely to be an external, like, outside of the airlines. I mean, yeah. anybody who's, who's um, been lucky enough, like we have, to see behind the scenes of when they do these things, there's no way uh, during their cleaning uh, pr- procedures and stuff that there's no way that something like that would have got missed. Because, I mean, they, yeah. cause they do do a deep clean on quite a regular basis, don't they? And stuff yeah. like this would have been been got at so i mean as you say i think it's more likely to be the person that was uh in that area on the uh initial leg of the flight i would imagine um hmm. you yeah. know I, I don't know i i I'd, i'm sorry that it's got british Airways stamped all over it really because that's not um I, yeah I, it's and not let's face it, it it could have been any airline, oh, yeah. couldn't it really it there could have go. been any airline. It God, just I've got to take that picture off the screen. It's making me hear. <laughs> I didn't actually put it up for our, our viewers in the. Oh, I've got it on in front of me. We do. <laughs> they, they don't need that kind of excitement in their day. It has to be said. 
So, <laughs> yes, anyway, I think we should all move, move on now on, before yeah. we all need Sorry. to go and de-louse. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on to the next story. And uh, this uh, this is one of the stories that hit the news this week. And it's, it's one of those, um, oh, really, you know, journalism gone crazy again. Uh, this one's on the abcnews.com. Uh, uh, website and it's all about the Air Berlin uh, aircraft that uh, done disastrously crazy moves and uh, the pilots who were flying the Air Berlin plane that buzzed the control tower in Dusseldorf Germany have been suspended according to the airline. Air Berlin said the pilots who have not been identified but not working in air service. Hmm. Mm. Uh, while an investigation continued into the incident, the airline has suspensions that were standard during a, a probe. Uh, in a statement, the airline said that before landing the plane, the pilots had engaged in a fly around maneuver. Uh, in aviation, safety comes first, they said. We take the incident very seriously, Air Berlin said in the statement. Statements from passengers as well as numerous YouTube videos have led to questions and speculations uh, which must be answered by the pilots and the control tower staff during the ongoing investigations. The incident is jointly examined by Air Berlin and relevant authorities and its normal procedures that all relevant crew members are exempted from the air service until the conclusion of such an investigation. Uh, the bankrupt European airline flew its last long-haul flight this week from Miami to Florida to Dusseldorf, and the Airbus A330 farewell flight left Mi uh, Miami on Sunday at around 5 p.m. and arrived into Dusseldorf a little after 8 a.m. local time. Air Berlin did not confirm how many passengers and crew were on board the aircraft at the time. However, Air the Air Berlin A330 seats a maximum of 290 passengers. Uh, Air Berlin is Germany's second largest airline is expected to cease operations at the end of October, according to the Associated Press. Max Siegmeier, a passenger aboard the flight, told ABC News that the pilot had told passengers about his plan to fly around the control tower about 10 minutes prior to doing so. Uh, Siegmeier said that the atmosphere on board the plane was one of amazement. Uh, when he did this manoeuvre, I think nobody was scared because everybody knew what happened, Sigmeier said, if adding, to, to adding that a passenger, uh, as a passenger, he also liked it. Uh, I think everybody looked out the window and everyone was excited, he added. It's not normal that you make such a manoeuvre at landing and it feels uh, great that I was on this flight, the last Air Berlin flight. German's Federal Aviation Office also confirmed to ABC News that the airline had been asked for more information regarding the incident. A fly-around maneuver is a normal operating procedure which must be mastered by the pilots and is applied as required. In this case, Luftfahrt Bundesmatt, German's Federal Aviation Office, asked Air Berlin to comment on the A330's fly-around maneuver in Dusseldorf since it differs from the usual start-up maneuvers and therefore requires clarification. The result of the internal investigations done by Air Berlin remains to be seen, the agency has said. Now, this uh, video I watched um, on YouTube, there's quite a few different videos and different aspects, different camera angles of what uh, this aircraft done. And, it, you know, it doesn't look like anything catastrophically ma you know, mad was done by the pilots at all. It was, you know, a move to kind of signify the last ever flight of this airline flying. And Matt's just put it on the screen there for those of you guys watching in YouTube. You can see there this particular camera angle of the aircraft and there's another one there do you know do you know what it actually reminds me of uh, uh, well i mean because I, I love top gun oh yes <laughs> i'm afraid it reminds me of that it has to be said indeed i yeah. mean it's not something you would expect a commercial airliner to actually do but it looks to... good i mean for anyone who was plane spotting well, at the airport there yeah. would have would have had a damn good time what do you think nev What's yeah. your view on this I, whole story? I, I think it's a, a big storm in a teacup. Again, I, um, how the pilot's going to be suspended from an airline that's just, just finished bust. operations? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, just a point of order. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I, I just think that this has been blown out of all proportion. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think there's anything to answer here. Uh, they told the tower what they were going to do, I, I guess. And uh, that was it. They went around and uh, did, did another uh, circuit in the pattern. Uh, so, uh, but, Are you uh, suggesting that yeah, there may be, may be some slightly questionable journalism here? 
uh, well, from, from an American. It's an, um... it's, it's an easy thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. Just makes it this, so. this is no, I, I think that they've probably over egged this slightly. But well, um, nonetheless, um, you know, um, I, I think that they. There's probably some truth to the story, uh, not that it was unsafe, but maybe that it had been fully cleared by some of the um, uh, the people involved. But no, nonetheless, yeah. you know, that, that's I think a standard as well, operating manoeuvre anyway. Yeah, I think as well, thing. Nev, some of the camera angles that were shot and taken and stuff yeah. do make it look, more make it look a lot yeah. more extreme than it really yeah. actually yeah. probably was. I'm sure air, air investigators will look at that footage with a, with an open mind, mm. I'd like to think, mm. and sort of, yeah. as long as yeah, no, exactly. no life, <laughs> no <laughs> Actually, first officer Mike in the chat room said that not the most brightest move to make if you're looking for another job soon. Well, there is that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there is that. Oh, approach, oh Captain but... Jeff's in the uh, oh, chat room. Oh <clears throat> Everyone behave themselves. Everyone behave themselves. <clears throat> Family show. On the other hand, it, it does um, uh, demonstrate the pilot's excellent, excellent <laughs> handling. Well, that's true. Yes, aircraft. I mean, it, it, so, maybe yeah. it's a job advert. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good <laughs> advert yeah, for yeah, the yeah. A330. Okay. It is. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Mind you, I saw the A380 doing amazing things at Farnborough, didn't I? True. So, uh, yeah. you know, True, uh, yeah. it's it's all about Airbus, you see? That's what it is. Never mind Nick, this where boing are rubbish. Come on, Nick. Boing. Anyway. Actually, uh, Nick was on last week, funnily enough. Yes, I know. Yeah, I was, know. I watched it, Nick, I, I think. Yes, oh, anyway, did you? From, from my bed. I did yes, wonder I did whether you were watching it, yes. us or not. Yeah, yeah. Watching the... <laughs> Yeah, the, the chaos, chaos unfold, unfold oh, around me. Absolutely, it's, all right. it's no better even though I'm here. So everyone Thank you. can remember. Thank you. Carry on, then. Uh, Your story. Yes, next. Uh, on the subject of Boeing, uh, we are on Reuters uh, for our next story, Ooh. and the headline is Singapore Airlines to finalise 13.8 billion dollar Boeing order next week. Mm. Uh, so this is um, sorry. This hasn't. This mouse hasn't made it any better. <laughs> I've oh really? Got a mouse issue here. Anyway, the airline said in February it would order 20 and 19. 787-10 wide bodies as part of plans to modernise its fleet over the next decade but the deal is yet to be finalised and placed in Boeing's order book as a Singapore Airlines order. The deal was viewed as a major blade to blow to Airbus SE as it battles against Boeing in the wide body market. Airbus has lagged Boeing in net orders for the first nine months of the year with 271 at the end of September versus 498 for its US rival. Lee told CNBC television on Thursday that he hoped an agreement would be signed with Boeing to buy more aircraft for Singapore Airlines during his US visit on the 22nd to the 26th of of October. More details about the order would be revealed after the, after the signing ceremony in Washington, a Singapore spokesman has said. So, um, yes, it's uh, the airline in February said it also acquired options to order six more of the aircraft of each type. Boeing in June booked orders for 20 777X, uh, 20 triple seven x's and 19787-10s for an unidentified customer or customers uh, making it possible uh, the singapore airlines uh, aircraft are already counted in this year's net orders boeing declined to comment singapore airlines is investing in modern fuel efficient aircraft while at the same time undertaking a strategic review designed to help cut costs amid growing com competition from Chinese and Middle Eastern rivals. While the Boeing order is worth around $13.8 billion at list prices, whoever plays list prices, who knows, uh, airlines <laughs> typically get discounts on jet orders. Uh, really, there's a shock. Jefferies in February estimated the deal's value at closer to 6.5 billion dollars. Is that really the markup? Is it like almost half? Is what the, is that what they're really? Because you you never really find out. You know that these airlines never actually pay full A list price. According to uh, according to the website that I'm looking at here, that okay. gives you the unit costs for uh, for these aircraft. That apparently, according to this, the Dash Nine, the Dreamliner Seven Eight Seven Dash Nine, has a unit cost of two hundred and sixty four point six million dollars. One of those. And what does that mean in real money? <laughs> well, probably, I'd, I'd be surprised if they do actually pay that because I mean mm. that the order they've put through here is quite a large order, yeah. so I'd imagine they probably get some sort of discount. Well, yeah. well yes, I hope so. Anyway, yeah. Well, and, and of course, on on that note, there the last uh, paragraph in this is Singapore Airlines is to launch custom it was the launch customer for the seven eight seven dash ten a stretch version of the Dreamliner, having made thirty firm orders in addition to the nineteen announced in February. Boeing completed final assembly of the airline's first 787-10 earlier this month, ahead of delivery in the first half of 2018. So, uh, yes. They're going to be it. busy. They are going to be They're going to be very yeah, busy. I, there, there was also a story that came on this week. I think it was one of the um, uh, Chinese, I think it was one of the Chinese airlines, China Eastern, or one of those 
China, Air, you know, Air China is one of them. They had, ma- had placed also a massive order with Boeing yeah. as well for uh, for some aircraft. So their mm. their backlog must be huge. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> really must be huge. So anyway, on to the next story then, Nev. Uh, I think this is it's Travel Weekly. I think next. it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And uh, this is all about uh, EasyJet and their continuing discussions to acquire up to 25 aircraft from uh, bankrupt Air Berlin. A successful deal would see the UK budget carrier operate the Airbus A320s from Berlin Tegel Airport. EasyJet, which currently flies from Berlin's Schoenefeld Airport, said last month that it had had bids for parts of the German airline's short-haul business. The carrier confirmed on Friday that negotiations are continuing with the overseers of Air Berlin's insolvency regarding a potential acquisition of part of the operations at Tegel. If agreement is reached and subject to obtaining all regulatory approvals, the transaction would result in EasyJet operating up to 25 A320 aircraft at Berlin's Tegel Airport, EasyJet said. And they will provide a further update in due course uh, if and when appropriate, uh, says the airline. Uh, Air Berlin filed for administration in August after major shareholder Etihad Airways uh, withdrew funding following years of losses. All flights are due to be grounded from October the 28th, which is next week. Lufthansa signed a £210 million deal on Thursday to take over Air Berlin units Nikki and LG Volta, uh, plus some short-haul aircraft to cement its position in Germany and expand its Eurowings budget brand. But Willie Walsh, chief executive of British Airways, uh, parent international airlines group said on friday he saw significant competition concerns with the deal which would see lufthansa taking on around 80 of air berlin's 130 aircraft everybody always complains don't they about somebody else getting getting an unfair advantage there's always some competition <laughs> stuff going on but uh, uh, this will be interesting because obviously there's a lot of airframes i didn't realize uh, how many aircraft air berlin had actually and how many employees it mm. had. So this will be a reasonable dent in mm. the. Um, uh, I mean, in, in, in those the, also. the fleet they've got like say sixty one three twenties and eleven three nineteens. They're all Airbus, yeah. obviously, and it does obviously mm. make sense if EasyJet does take some of these on. You know that yeah, a, well, they're, EasyJet they're, are in all Airbus yeah, fleet I anyway. Say, yeah, they're they're. Um, Mm. Uh, they're A319s and A320s as well, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, in, yeah it'll in just fit Airbus's fleet. Yeah. Just a bit, a bit of respraying, repainting with some new Yeah, I mean, the orange may not be, you know, yeah. the red may not. It's yeah. not far away from orange. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And I think a lot of these, uh, actually, I've got a funny feeling that a lot of these uh, aircraft that were brought by Air Berlin are fairly young airframes. Right, um, okay. Quite a few of these are fairly young airframes. So, so I mean, so j- just remind me, so Air Berlin was a, was a national carrier, was it? Was it owned by, or was it just, it just used Berlin in the name? It was the second largest in Germany, wasn't it? Right. Um, uh, yeah, they were, that's right. And they were kind of a, 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 kind of a budget carrier as such. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. Fair um, enough. No, I've never flown on Air Berlin, but um, it, no. it's always sad when airlines go... It is, yes. Well, I mean, we've only got to look at Monarch. I mean, it's a mm. similar, it's a similar sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, the next story I think is with you, Carlos. This is on the Independent. Yes, one of those wonderful airlines uh, that we talk about every now and again on the show. Normally to do with alcohol mm. and uh, yes, it rowdy, did, yes. rowdy people, rowdy, rowdy punters. punters. Yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, but this is a complete change here because Jet Two Airlines or Airways in the UK, Jet Two, have been named the UK's most punctual airline according to a new oag index Mm -hmm. no really yeah whatever (laughs) so jet 2 is the uk's most punctual airline according to a new global accreditation program air travel intelligence company oag rated more than 130 airlines omg only like (laughs) language uh, they assessed their punctuality over 12 months. Those with the highest number of flights that arrived within 15 minutes of the scheduled time were awarded a five-star rating. Jet2 was the only British airline to achieve this result with 87.5% of its flights running on time. The low-cost airline was also deemed the 10th most punctual in OAG's list. Virgin Atlantic, British Airways... And EasyJet were all beaten by Jet2 with their three stars apiece. Uh, the now defunct Monarch uh, Airlines achieved four stars for its punctuality. 
Uh, British Airways and EasyJet both operate significantly more flights than Jet2, which may contribute to their lower scores. Some 78% of BAs uh, arrive on time, while 75% of EasyJets land within 15 minutes of the scheduled arrival times. Ryanair, Europe's largest uh, airline, was not included in the o list of OAG's must-process uh, flight status information for no less than 80% of scheduled flights in a 12-month period for an airline to be included in the program. Ryanair currently does not share enough of its flight status data to meet this uh, criterion. Ooh, but you see, you see. Now, I, I do take umbrage at this a little bit because I, I, we all know Jet Two, obviously. But no, as it quite rightly says in in the story here, it it's hardly a fair comparison <laughs> because the amount of flights that they're doing versus let we'll use EasyJet because it is in the in in mm. that um and then in that sort of chart for want of a better word. It, it's but it's not a fair comparison because their their f throughput, if you like, is significantly bigger than Jet 2's. So that's, that's not a fair comparison. It also says here that OAG's on-time program, OTP, also analysed data from airports around right. the world to determine which were the most punctual of the airports in the UK, Birmingham, Cardiff and Liverpool were awarded five stars with 90%, wow. uh, 89% and 87% of flights leaving and arriving on time respectively. Mm. London Heathrow We've all flown from London Heathrow, I think. Yep. Europe's busiest airport received two stars for punctuality, mm. while London's Gatwick attained just one star. With but again, thirty eight percent of flights the airport's departing. fault, is it? It's, <laughs> it's all about the airline that's flying out of it. So it's like it, it's unlikely that the airport is the reason why the aeroplane was late in taking off. I, I don't know where they account for these sorts of figures when oh. they do these things, but um, hmm. I've I actually I've never I've never flown Jet to, but. There are there are a lot of people I speak to now, uh, who I work with, who are you who are using Jet Two mm. for uh, for travelling around Europe. So so I'm going to be very controversial here and say that 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 uh, chart rundown is not very <laughs> fair on anyone. I don't. I, we do I, have a top ten at the end of the year. Uh, do we? Yeah, top, well, 10, top twenty. Top, I think top, top, top twenty. 20 yeah. Oh, I can't we'll count that. I blimey. I know. <laughs> So oh, next okay. story. Yes, okay, this would be me, wouldn't it? Yes, this is on the Air Cargo News website. Is that it the is. right one? Yeah, okay. Uh, so it says Cargo Lux renews safety certificate. So who are Cargo Lux? Cargo Lux are one of those, uh, they're a big cargo carrier. Okay, uh, all right they're, they're, one of those, the... they're one of those airlines. If you go on Flight Radar 24 okay. about three in the morning, okay. you'll see them. Th you'll see them, right, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, so Cargo Lux has passed its sixth IATA operational safety audit, the I. O -S uh, right, o uh, the <laughs> IOSA audit with exceptionally good results. The IOSA program is designed to assess the operational management and control systems of an airline. During the five-day renewal, which takes place every two years, the airline was audited. Has the the airline was audited Cargo Lux on about 900 different standards that line makes no sense the preparation for this in preparation for this a team of 20 people from all concerned divisions oh this is such terrible english uh, <laughs> worked throughout the year to achieve this exceptional result uh, the fantastic result uh, uh, the, this fantastic result is the result of efforts and endless commitment that the Cargo Lux staff have put into this enhanced IOSA renewal audit, even during some very stressful moments, said Graham Hurst, Cargo Lux Vice President and Quality and Compliance Monitoring. The Quality and Compliance Monitoring staff, the Cargo Lux IOSA coordinators, the divisional IOSA representatives, and all who were audited or contributed to the preparation before and during the audit. audit. Cargo Lux first passed the audit <laughs> in 2007. This is I, so I'm for so those of you. I who had to literally <laughs> proofread that as I was doing it. So for those anyway. of you who who are not are oh, not sure on who Cargo Lux I are, have no idea. So Cargo Lux, uh, obviously a cargo airline, founded in uh, March 1970. Nothing gets past you, Carlos. No. And uh, <laughs> well, I'm a hive of that information. <laughs> you are indeed. And uh, yeah. their base uh, headquarters are in Luxembourg, hence Cargo Lux. Uh, oh, I see. They have, I see what they did there. I know. Yeah. They've got a yeah. fleet size of 26, which is made up of Boeing 747-400 ERFs. They've also got a Boeing 747-400F. And they were the launch customer for the Boeing 747-8F. Uh, they've got 14 of those uh, in Fantastic. the fleet. Fantastic. 
And like I said, if you want to, uh, if you want to see one of these flying, if you if you go on Flight Radar Twenty Four, uh, in the early hours of the morning over here in the UK, you'll be able to see those on there, winging their way across uh, Europe and uh, the UK, um, or going all around the world. Well, indeed, indeed. So um, yes, it's. Uh, I don't really know what to say to that. <laughs> well, <Okay. laughs> well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next story, then, Nev. I was just going to say that I don't think that's the most interesting story we've ever done. Uh, uh, but, what, you know, whatever, <laughs> did, whatever gave you that idea? <laughs> oh, that was that, that was actually the reason I put that story in. Was, you were desperate. Was, you ran no, out of other stories. What, that what? was actually <laughs> supposed to be a Pip story, but obviously oh, we haven't I got see, Pip with us because right. it's a safe story. Okay. See, safe story. Hey, I see. There we go. Do you know sometimes okay. there is actually some vaguely editorial information going into this show. It's it's, it's amazing, isn't it? I do try and work yeah. the new stories. Oh, you're round very the, trying round, yeah. round the hosts. <laughs> you know, I do try. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, on that note, uh, it'd be uh, interesting. Sir Nev. To see, yes, Sir Nev. What have you got for us? Uh, this is from the uh, CNBC website, and it's about the uh, new Airbus A330 Neo, and uh, they uh, debuted the um, uh, aircraft on Thursday as the new plane took off. From Toulouse in France on its maiden test flight. The aircraft is a medium to long range wide body jet with Rolls Royce uh, Trent 7000 engines. Uh, the two versions, the A330 800 and A330 900, can accommodate 257 and 287 passengers respect, uh, respectively. Uh, NEO stands for the new engine option. The uh, A330 900 version, which took to the skies uh, today, is destined for full certificate around the middle of 2018 and the slightly smaller A330-800 is set to follow in 2019. And Airbus has claimed that the latest A330 will use 14% less fuel per seat. Uh, industry observers suggest that the fuel-friendly version is designed to up the competition with the latest version of Boeing's 787 Dreamliner. The A330-800 is built to fly a maximum of 13,900 kilometres, whilst the 900 series should cover 12,130 kilometres. Uh, Airbus has said both plane configurations have the ability to take greater payloads, al allowing it to be used comfortably on such routes such as Kuala Lumpur to London, which is appro approximately 10,600 kilometres. So that's another good, uh, good piece of engineering from uh, the Airbus group and uh, this is the way it's going isn't it it's uh, it's very efficient two engined large aircraft mm. uh, and I think this is um, this is, might be interesting for, for the A380 in, in future we've spoken about this before haven't we where yeah, yeah. Uh, we thought that the A380 as you know great plane that it is uh, might have been slightly ahead of its time but now um, one of the few en one, of, one of the few aircraft that has uh, four engines now uh, which yeah. is of course are expensive to run they certainly are, aren't they? And yeah. this is the thing now with manufacturers, you know, this the A330 is a proven airframe and mm -hmm. Airbus have re-engined it, put more fuel-efficient engines mm -hmm. on and, you know, they, they haven't made a few lot modification tweaks to the aircraft mm -hmm. but uh, and it's, it's you know, looking rather nice, I must say. It looks, looks a lot yeah. better than the, uh, the original mm -hmm. 330. And I'm pretty sure this is one of the ones that myself and Owen, when we went to, to lose on my little test yeah, flight. Yeah, you probably did see, um, see I think we did actually see it the, outside of the hangar. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, it was. Um, uh, seriously, if any, I, I know I said this at the time, but if anybody does does get the chance to go, you have to go to. Um, uh, That's that on my list. It, it, it really is a must, and it, it you know because you can fly straight into Toulouse from Stansted. It's Perhaps so me, you, and Nev can go there next year. Yeah, that sounds like. Well, yeah. wait, well, oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. we'll go and have a little we'll have a little trip. Yeah, absolutely, sounds good. So moving on to uh, the next story, and uh, this one is another Airbus story, actually. Oh, it is. And it's got some sound which shouldn't be Ooh, on. There we go. Lovely. We'll turn that Good. Off. Going smoothly, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here. Move on. <laughs> so this one is on the dailypost.co.uk website. And the headline, Airbus says, no jobs impact on Broughton from Bombardier partnership. And I said, Bombardier, Matt, before you say anything. Okay. <laughs> oh, go on. Oh, Bombardier. Sorry, Thank you. Sorry. Anyway, moving on. So uh, Airbus <laughs> says that the partnership with Bombardier will have no impact on jobs at Brighton. Uh, on Tuesday this week, Airbus announced it had acquired Airbus. Airbus announced it had required. <laughs> Hold on. 
for half an hour. There we go. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> it announced on Tuesday it acquired a majority stake in Bombardier's C Series aircraft program. Uh, this week it had been reported that Chief Executive Officer Tom Enders had said Airbus will push the Canadian model's largest variant, the CS300, uh, at the expense of the similarly sized uh, A319 Neo. Uh, but Airbus has told the Daily Post that they expect the A319 and CS300 will coexist, targeting a different market segments. They said that there was currently a 75 jet backlog on the A319. A spokesman told the Daily Post a new partnership with Bombardier brings together two complementary product lines of single aisle aircraft and strengthens our global competitiveness. The combined offering and the synergies will unleash more compelling power in our sales campaigns. Uh, from which the whole Airbus and C-Series worker community will benefit. This is a win-win situation for Bardier and Airbus workers as well as for our respective supply chains. Our single aisle aircraft program, of which the A319 is part, continues to ramp up uh, due to a huge demand across the globe. From monthly production rates of 50 aircraft at the start of this year to a rate of 60 aircraft uh, by the middle of 2019. The C Series is a highly complementary, uh, or highly complementary to Airbus' single aisle aircraft family, and we expect the A319 to coexist with the CS300 as both aircraft target different market segments and offer benefits that answer different customer needs. The backlog for the A319 is 75 aircraft, so it makes up a small percentage of the single aisle production program, and there will be no impact to jobs at Brighton. That's good news. Mm, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Really good news, because uh, this, this was a big story when mm. it broke earlier on in the week, with uh, Airbus, uh, you know, snapping up a large set of parts. Uh, just of just give the, the guys the details of how to look up their story, because there is actually a, a video on that story, which for those of you watching in YouTube have it's been awesome. watching. It is, seriously, yeah. if you're an Airbus fan, it is an absolute must-watch. Just give them the, the URL of, of, of that, that website, because it is absolutely incredible. Yeah, if you take yourselves over, this is the dailypost.co.uk. Uh, forward slash business, forward slash business, mm. uh, slash news, slash Airbus. Yeah. And I can, if you click I on can there, uh, post that in the chat room. If that yeah, yeah do, post absolutely. that in the chat room. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there is uh, really and good I'll make video. sure I include it in the show notes, actually, because it is an absolute, it's, it, as I say, if you're an Airbus fan, it's actually basically, uh, to, to cut the long story short, it's got ver basically their entire current up-to-date fleet uh, all flying together, everything from helicopters to the A400M, uh, the A350X WB was, was in there, um, um, look at me, no me. <laughs> I know, I'm slightly quite scary, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly proud of myself. Yeah, there's a Neo anyway. in there. That's, yeah. uh, it's really like yeah, 350. Yeah, seriously, uh, if, you're, if you're a fan of uh, Airbus, you must have a look at that. It, it, it does look really good. This is a stunning video. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, we're going to move on to the last thing, and it is uh, this was sent to us by the legend that is Sir Brian, Brian of Coleman, wasn't yes. it? So, uh, yes. Thank you, Brian, uh, for sending this in. Yes, indeed. So uh, with, uh, with uh, that in mind... So the last story then is a top 20, and uh, well, a part of it's a top 20 anyway. So, yeah. so it's a top 20 of the worst airports in the right. world. Uh, is it? Okay. All right. In the world. In the world. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so is, is that it? Are we ready to go? Oh, yeah, we're ready yeah, to okay. go. If you want to fire up the music, Mr. Smith. And it's maybe a little bit quiet. It's so maybe a little bit quiet. <laughs> we'll, we'll Absolutely. <laughs> you carry on. I'll sort it out while it while it's uh, being sorted. Oh, so yeah. okay. So this is the worst airports in the world, 2017, uh, as brought to us by the uh, CEO World dot biz website. And this was this was on that. Uh, uh, this actually came online on the 19th, which was yesterday. Very good. Well, so here we go. In at. Number 20. At number 20, it is Addis Ababa International Airport what? in Ethiopia. Splendid. Uh, new at number 20. Uh, number 19. I can't count this high. Number 19. <laughs> <laughs> That's at uh, Islamabad Benazir Bhutto International Airport in Pakistan. At number 18. At number 18. Oh, blimey. Uh, <laughs> This is going uh, so smoothly. Kluge <laughs> International Airport in Romania, or Kluge Clu Clu International Dude, Airport Dude, if in I Romania. can barely say numbers, you, I've got no chance reading any of these out. Number 17, please, no. 
Oh, thanks for that. Yeah, uh, it's uh, Guangzhou Bayan uh, <laughs> International Airport in China. Do you think Brian sent this to us to challenge us? I think he us? did. I think thanks, so. Brian. At number 16. At number 16. Oh, I know this one. At number 16, <laughs> Caracas, Simon, Bolivar. Your Caracas, International I know that Airport, much. <laughs> Venezuela. <laughs> number 15. <laughs> Chania International Airport in Greece. See, it's really easy if you say it quickly. Number 14. Oh, an easy one, an easy one. Yeah. At number 14, New York City LaGuardia. Right, okay. In the USA. At uh, number 13, please, unlucky for some. Kathmandu International Airport in Nepal. Mm. Uh, it's a new entry at number 12. Number 12, it is Jenny, uh, her favourite airport. Oh. Rome Campino uh. Airport in Italy. Legs 11. And it's London Luton International Ooh, Airport in England. I'm, I'm surprised it was that high, actually. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and we're into slightly more familiar territory now as we go into our top ten. Oh, uh, number ten. It's You're right, <laughs> Tashkent I beg your pardon. International <laughs> Airport in Uzbe Uzbekistan. Right, OK. You can get a cream for that, you know. I number know. nine, please, Nev. <laughs> Uh, it's a Paris Beauvais Airport in France. <laughs> Number eight. Number eight is an airport I've flown through myself. It's Rhodes International oh, Airport in Greece. Excellent. It is number seven, new entry. <laughs> Dar es Salaam uh, International Airport in Tanzania. Uh, number six, please. Number six, a lovely airport. This one, Santorini. Tira National Airport in Greece. Oh, we that was quite are nice. I quite enjoyed flying through there a few months ago. <laughs> we are down to number five. And that's uh, Lagos uh, International Airport in Nigeria. Oh, right. Oh, dear. There's a bit of a shudder coming from Carlos on that one. Number four. <laughs> it's uh, number four is Crete Heraklion Airport, International Airport in Greece. OK, we're into the top three. It's number three. Port Harcourt International Airport in Nigeria. It's climbed five places. It's number two. <laughs> number two, it's Jeddah King Abdulaziz International Airport in Saudi Arabia. Splendid, splendid. And finally, it is top of the shop. It is number one. And that's Huber International Airport in South Sudan. All right, pot pickers, not <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> but not just, just, just. We can't just do one top twenty. We've got no, a, we can. We, really. We've <laughs> got to sling a top ten in because, we, yeah, we've got. Why? Because it's top ten. <laughs> it's the top ten airport, worst airports oh, in Europe. Okay. All right then. Yeah. Okay. So in at number ten. At number ten, top ten worst airports in Europe. It's Berlin Tegel Airport in Germany. And at number nine, please, Nev. And not to be outdone, it's Berlin Schönefeld Airport, also in Germany. Number eight. Oh, at number eight, it's that one I just had earlier. It's <laughs> Kluge International Airport in Romania. You. Right, OK. Number seven, please. Charnia International Airport in Greece. Oh. It's our newest entry. It's our highest climber. It's number six. Oh, number six. It's, it's Jenny's again. It's Rome Campino Airport Ooh. in Italy. There we are. We're middle for diddle. It's number five. Oh. London Luton Airport. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good old Pip. Number four. Number four, Paris Bouvet, Tier de France. Ooh, very nice. Number three. That's Rhodes International Airport, also in Greece. It was number one last week. It is number oh. two this week. Oh, it's that one that Nev loves. Santorini National Airport in Greece. And finally, top of the shop, it is number one. And it's Heraklion uh, International Airport in Greece. A lot of, lot of uh, Greek airports. A lot of Greek, Greek airports. airports. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. These are the worst or airports. Worst right, airports okay. in Europe, so yeah. We're, we're fair enough. Actually, you say that. Uh, I was uh, in uh, Luton during the week, and uh, I did actually oh, wave at um, NetJets. Oh, did you? I was actually at the airport, but I Who couldn't... Who flies get... for them? What? Who flies for them? I don't know. Someone. Oh, okay. Yeah, anyway, anyway. I'd, well, I'd never seen them before, so it was nice to see the little, um, you know... Logo. Yeah, it was. Exactly. Anyway. So there we go. There was our, <laughs> that was a bit of a all in there, top 20 and top 10. So a big thank you to Brian Coleman Very much for so. sending that yes, list in to indeed, us this absolutely. week. He's in the chat room, actually. Is he? Oh, yeah, fantastic. Brian is. Okay, yes. Yeah, sorry, I've just realised that's the most useless anecdote I've ever said out loud, isn't it, really? I know, yes, I was I at know. Luton Airport looking at a company we know nothing <laughs> Liz, about. Liz Piper yeah. in the chat rooms, but lots of Greek stuff on that list indeed yes absolutely not very and uh, at all. liz also says lagos captain nick might agree oh really yeah. uh and jeff's and captain jeff's but oh, it's, yeah. all, it's, it's all greek to him uh, oh dear it's all greek <laughs> <laughs> now i was going to revert back to my show notes list there but what's but, one of those we're not we're not <laughs> we're hardly gonna follow no, we're the not show following notes now. so what do you want to do next so <laughs> next then it's uh it's actually time for uh for uh um, Nev to introduce oh, his segment ah. for this week. So, okay. Nev, I'll hand things 
over to you. Thanks very much indeed. Yeah, well, uh, this uh, um, passenger segment uh, was brought to you by uh, oh, a couple of weeks ago, actually. I was in um, Soho in London and I was talking to a good friend of mine, um, Nick, and uh, we talked about the usual uh, passenger experience that he has. And unfortunately, um, British Airways has come in for a little bit of stick. Oh, Here we go. Dear. Hello everyone and welcome to another in the series of Nev's Passenger Experience. Well, this week I'm in Soho in the West End of London, which is the heart of the UK media industry and has a vast selection of restaurants and bars also. All very convivial, in fact. Whilst I was there, I bumped into Nick Purnell, who runs his own digital media, press and PR company and inevitably spends quite a large amount of time flying around to meet his clients. We met over lunch and as I had my microphone and recorder with me, I couldn't resist the temptation to ask Nick what he thought about his flying experiences. Well, I'm afraid that British Airways has come in for some more criticism, as you'll hear, and I began by asking Nick what was the last flight that he took? Uh, it was a flight out at the end of the summer to Puglia, to Bari, uh, and obviously the return flight two weeks later it was with British Airways. Um, again, it just springs to mind how the short-haul British Airways flights, um, really, how shocking the standard is. Running out of food, not having enough wines of certain types, and then the cabin crew having to make excuses. Sorry, we didn't have a load here. Sorry, we didn't have a load there. Uh, flights were delayed. One flight we didn't even get told why it was delayed. And it was, it was just unsatisfying. I think the feeling is, and I, I think most of the people I know who fly British Airways, we've been so spoilt in the past. And now where short haul is concerned, they seem to be transforming themselves very much into a Ryanair stroke EasyJet. But the difference being, you know when you book a Ryanair or EasyJet or one of those cheap airlines, you know what you're going to get. Where with British Airways, they haven't even geared themselves up to react like that. Their logistics just don't seem to work. Do you think that this is a, a common theme run, running through some of these airlines that try and be a low cost model but of course their their cost base is so high they, they could never really achieve that as you say EasyJet and Ryanair you know what you're going to get. Well I think British Airways has got a huge problem uh, yes it's tied into a huge um, uh, company with lots of different airlines but at some point in the future they must be considering amalgamation in terms of getting rid of an awful lot of doubling ups with Iberia and, and so on and so forth. I just don't think that it's been thought through properly. Almost to a degree, you would have thought they'd have walked away and said, right, we've got to go down the cheap airline route. So let's invent one. We can keep the name or call it BA Cheap or BA Easy or something of that sort and launched it like that rather than bit by bit denuding the service on board so the cabin crew don't really know what they're doing people coming on board don't know what they're doing or what they're going to get and then have having continuous disappointments on board your flight you can't have this sorry we didn't get enough of that oh we couldn't restock at the other end so i just don't think it's i think it's being done on the quick on the cheap i'll tell you what we know how to run an airline and this is how we're going to do it rather than saying let's just reinvent it completely give it a new name uh, and and think it through as a new airline and I think that's my issue is that they haven't and they're chopping and changing it's a bit like a plumber coming in doing a bodge job and a new plumber coming in and going oh I'm not touching that mate and you need to start from the beginning and I, I think we're getting to those realms with British Airways there is such dissatisfaction. Alex Cruz of course was the CEO of Vueling uh, a low-cost airline and do you think this is what we're, we're seeing some of his work in inverted commas now? I've never flown Vueling, so I can't comment, but he obviously has decided this is the way to go, but then he hasn't brought people in to do it like that. It's that whole dissociation. Dissociate the main company from the project that you have, rather than saying, look, this is how we did it there, and trying to get everyone to work it. You can't run logistics as you have for one company and decide it's going to be different for two. In a sense, you almost have to split it down the middle and say, this is how we're running long haul, 
and this is how we're running short haul. Short haul becomes the easy jet of, of tomorrow. Now your wife is Finnish, so no doubt you're going backwards and forwards to Helsinki. Quite a lot. Have you tried Finnair at all? Yes, I have actually. Three years ago we flew Finnair, and then uh, it it was quite an old-fashioned service in terms of the standards were set at a certain height. I have heard from my Finnish friends who always fly Finnair. You have to as a Finn, or else you'll never be allowed back in the country. Um, that that it's in a sense it's starting to mirror what British Airways is doing. But all I can say with Finnair, I've only ever had a, a, a good experience. Just go back to the BA thing. If you were brand manager of the economy cabin, what would be your first job in the first day of your work, would you say? Blimey, there's a question and a half. I suppose what I would look to do is to absolutely dissociate short haul from long haul. Long haul becomes a premium product, something that you can sell, as Etihad and Qatar have done. And then you say, all right, let's, let's just re, rebirth this. Let's redo it. And you look at what EasyJet has done, who in the past five or six years has really become the traveler's choice. Uh, it still does the same thing about you have to book for this, you have to book for that, you have to book for the other, and it's really hard to get any refunds. Why bother to go down that route and then pretend you're something else? My view is, if I was brand manager, I'd come and say, right, let's rebrand. Let's rethink what we do, and let's be really honest about it. Let's not go onto our, lure people onto our websites with promises of this and promises of that. Why don't we get them onto a website and say, you get this long haul, and you get this on short haul, and what you get is top notch. It's quite interesting, isn't it? As here we are in the middle of Soho, a couple of middle-aged gentlemen uh, enjoying a glass of wine and, uh, and some food. It's not just us that's saying this. Everybody seems to be saying the same thing. Well, we came off uh, the flight at the other end, and it was a return flight from Italy, and there's a real mixture of, of young and old. I don't class myself as middle-aged, obviously, in my 50s. But the reality, the reality is, is there were some youngsters there in their late 20s, early 30s, and they were saying the same things we were. So I'm very careful not to be, oh, in my day. But the reality is, is, is that they are really disappointed. You have to remember that British Airways in the 80s and 90s was a love mark. It was something that was really important. It was an ambassador. You, you got on in a troubled zone, you know, war zone. You got onto a British Airways flight and you felt you were home. You felt you were safe, like an embassy. And all of that is now dissipating. They're losing all that goodwill. They're losing all that love because they haven't thought, I don't think, they've thought this through. And as, as a brand, the whole British Airways could sink because they should think about let's splitting it in half. Have you had any recent experience of the real low-cost carriers in terms of EasyJet and Ryanair at all? Well, I almost did uh, EasyJet. Um, we had to cancel the flights out there. And the, the bummer there, of course, is that... You know, with, uh, with two weeks to go, three weeks to go, you can't get any refund whatsoever, which is understandable. But you take that on the chin because you book cheap anyway. And so it's all there in black and white, so you get it. And that's what I'm talking about, honesty. You've got to be honest to the people travelling with you. If they understand what they're buying, they'll be kinder to you. If you give them this sugar-coated, woohoo, this is fantastic, they're going to get really hacked off, especially when they run out of wine or beer, or things that people quite enjoy when they're going on holiday. You're not the first person to have said that. Anyway, Nick, as usual, great pleasure speaking to you. Thanks for your time today. Pleasure. Find this and other great shows at the Aviation Media Network. The Plain Talking UK podcast is a voluntary project that aims to keep you informed with the latest aviation-related stories from newswires across the globe. Producing our content does cost money, though. If you enjoy our show, why not help us keep on the air by making a donation towards the server and website hosting fees through PayPal? Any contributions would be greatly appreciated. Are you an Amazon user? If so, why not do your shopping through the link on our website? There's no cost to yourself, and Amazon pays us a small referral fee on qualifying purchases. To find out more about the show and to meet the team, take yourself to our website. 
website www.plaintalkinguk.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash plaintalkinguk on Twitter via at plaintalkinguk or get in touch via email on podcast at plaintalkinguk.com Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. Flyby 5823 Trent Dane for 23R Manchester Wizz Air 6X Climb Flight Level 210 Direct to Bretman's Park United, one, two, three, maintain two, eight, zero knots. Tandem to DME, turn right onto Bravo, link. Do one, join Alpha, hold at Mora. Speedbird 472, LOC slash DME, approach runway 27 left. Follow the green stand 544. That's enough air traffic control for today, Nat. Bedtime. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to fly a commercial passenger jet? Looked up at the sky and thought, I wish that was me? Well, now anyone has the chance to have a go at flying in a real aircraft simulator. NP Simulations and Flight Experience London, the only official Boeing-licensed product of its kind in the UK, offer you the chance to fly anywhere in the world in their fixed-base Boeing 737-800 Flight Simulator. And that's not all. Ground School London offers many different courses for the up-and-coming pilot looking for a start in aviation. With prices starting at just £109, the sky's the limit. So for the ultimate flight simulator experience, or engaging preparatory courses, including those for schools and colleges, check out the websites at www.london.flightexperience.co.uk and www.groundschoollondon.com or call on 020 300 40 616. NP Simulations. Fly your dreams. As always, sterling work from uh, Nev. Thank you, Nev. Oh, thank you very much indeed. It's always good to hear uh, the passenger experience it segment. Is, absolutely. But you've got uh, some in the in well in the in production. I think you said, didn't you? Yeah, have, we've got a uh, couple in the can. And uh, next week's one's a chap called Ed Cook, who uh, runs one of the largest uh, audiovisual systems integrators in the UK. And uh, I'll be talking to him about his flying experience. Mm. And uh, it's a bit a bit more positive, hopefully. Hopefully, hope, anyway. So we have got a military segment for you this week. Just a few stories, but uh, one of them's got an awesome video. It has, actually. Yes, yeah. uh, story I know a certain story. Jonathan Warner who is going to wet himself he is when he sees this. Very much yeah, enjoy this. Yeah. So if everyone's ready, we're going to do some military news. Are you ready, Nev? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. So our first news story in the military segment this week is uh, on the Royal Air Force's website. And uh, the headline is UK return for Red Arrows after 11 country overseas tour. So after 8,000 miles, jets from the Royal Air Force aerobatic team have returned home from an overseas tour promoting the best of British. Oui. The Red Arrows, distinctive Hawk aircraft, arrive at the team's base of RAF Scampton in Lincolnshire earlier on Saturday. Uh, Eleven counties were visited, or countries I should say, were visited in five weeks with the world-renowned display team helping to showcase the UK excellence in engineering, innovation, creativity and education for millions of people. The landing at RF Scampton also marked a close to the Red Arrows 2017 campaign, its 53rd season during which 70 displays were flown at home and overseas. Wing Commander Andrew Keith, Officer Commanding Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team, said the tour was a great demonstration of a key role of the Air Red Arrows, uh, the national ambassadors powerfully supporting and promoting UK interests. We were privileged to fly to a range of countries across Europe and the Middle East with hundreds of thousands of people either seeing the performances live or learning more about the team and the UK through the resulting media coverage. Uh, everywhere the team flew, they were very well received and the tour highlighted the strong, important and often long-standing ties the UK and our armed forces have with their counterparts overseas. 
The tour was staged in great support uh, with the Great Britain campaign, the government's most ambitious international marketing campaign, showcasing the very best of what our whole nation has to offer uh, in order to encourage the world to visit, study and do business with the UK. The deployment began just a few days after the Red Arrow's last air show in the UK of the summer season began with a fly past over the Cannes Yachting Festival and supporting British industry exhibiting, uh, exhibiting at the event. After France, Athens Flying Week was a destination with the Red Arrows, performing displays on the back-to-back -back days. Moving to Jordan, the squadron was uh, honoured to complete or compete in a fly past over eight national landmarks, including Petra. The first uh, display in Saudi Arabia by the Red Arrows in a decade was then staged in Jeddah to help mark the Kingdom's National Day before a move to Kuwait, only the third time the team has ever performed there. Doha's, uh, or Doha's skyscraper line uh, Corniche provided the next venue for a display and also a special mixed fly uh, formation fly past uh, with a Qatar Airways Airbus A350 celebrating the airline's 20th uh, anniversary and also highlighting the airline as British made Rolls Royce engine and wings. Muscat Oman was the sixth show location and then the team performed in Karachi. The first time the Red Arrows had displayed in Pakistan for 20 years was broadcast live on national television. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, the last public display of the deployment and the 2017 season was in Bahrain against a perfect blue sky. Beginning the Which is something that's not happened at all this year here yeah, in the yeah. UK. <laughs> uh, beginning the flight home uh, was uh, was a rare chance to fly with the Royal Saudi Air Force aerobatic display team, the Saudi Hawks. It saw 16 Hawker jets, 7 belonging to Saudi Arabia and 9 of the Red Arrows in the skies over Ryder. Uh, the aircraft arrived back to RAF Scampton on Saturday following a transit through Europe, refuelling at locations in countries such as Cyprus, Greece, Italy and France. But the aerial performances were only part of the campaign. A comprehensive program of ground activity was also staged in each of the tour locations, including industry events, school visits and presentations to business leaders. More than 2,000 students were met by members of the Royal Arrows Red Arrows team. So they you know, they have had a fairly busy year, mm, uh, have, to yeah. say the least, the Red Arrows, and put on some. I mean, we've been to, uh, well, we've seen them at quite a few displays. We have, actually, uh, yeah. This year, we've been very we've lucky been very indeed lucky, to see yeah. them. And, uh, yeah, it's always good to see them red arrows at displays and um well you know they're, they're obviously probably planning their 2018 mm. season already i expect indeed now if you're watching at the top of the show you'll know that uh, carlos mentioned this aircr aircraft when we were talking to captain rick earlier on uh, and uh, our next story actually um is oh sorry before i um do that uh, hello to will hardcastle who is watching watching for the very first time hello, will. on uh youtube so uh, well done to him he's finally worked out the technology i'm very impressed <laughs> it is uh, it is uh, uh on the which website is this the stripes.com is the website mm. and the headline is air force bids farewell to last active duty c130h cargo plane and uh, it's got a great video here which I'll try and play when we're talking uh, in a little while but the last C-130H Hercules cargo plane in the active duty Air Force bid, bid sayonara to Japan on Monday. The aircraft was the last of its kind assigned to the Yokota based 36th Airlift Squadron which has been uh, trading uh, out its 14H models for newer J models in recent months it's sad to see them go, said Lieutenant Colonel John Kerr, shortly before he took the controls of the old Herc for a long flight to Montana. Like the other H models, the plane will take on new jobs for the Air National Guard. So they're not leaving service per se, but uh, they said they've got a, a new home. Uh, the trip home was also Kerr's last flight. He's retiring from the Air Force and uh, looking for a looking for a work in commercial aviation. He said before the plane lifted off, Colonel Kevin Wade, a C-130 pilot and commander of the uh, 515 Air Mobility Operations Group told members of the 36th that the new planes won't mean a change of culture. Your blood and sweat stopped genocide in East T Timor. Uh, it relieved flood and earthquake victims in places such as Malaysia, Nepal and Japan, he said. Wade uh, recalled a difficult packing job on a C-130H that was supporting a team looking for the remains of missing US servicemen in the Vietnam War. Our port dog... Uh, <laughs> 
logistics airman and other loadmaster did what uh, did what could best be described as a life a real life tetris he said they managed to fit every single person and all of their equipment into the back of the aircraft the plane was able to get to uh, f- um, is it Phnom Penh I think I'm not very good with my Phnom Penh yes. Phnom Penh uh, for the uh, first repatriation ceremony of a fallen American service member since the Vietnam War he said on a trip to Os- uh, Osan Air Base a uh, a crew chief swam through water surrounding a herc to attach a tow bar on a trip to uh, the uh, Kadena Air Base. An air crew flight equipment airman administered oxygen to a pregnant space available passenger whilst while calming her worried husband, Wade said. It's uh, we are known for action, and the situation dictates as and when the situation dictates. And comparison when our friends need it, and compassion. I'm so sorry. I've lost the ability to read today. I'm very sorry. The H models did uh, incredible work during their 28 years at Yakota, said uh, 374th Airlift Wing Commander Colonel Kenneth Moss. Uh, those planes have given some work, have given some people their first flight to freedom, or their last flight home to a final resting place and has been part of uh, the people's lives everywhere in between. Uh, Yokota continues to be the most important airbase in the world, Moss added. While the country of Japan sheds tears today for the departure of the H model, I look forward to them also shedding tears of joy as we cement the continuing relationship between America and Japan for a great future he said so sort of sad it's being taken out of service with the army i guess but it, it is it does look like it's uh, going on to new homes immediately yeah the new series now the j series mm. it's obviously the the latest um kind of variant of the hercules which is currently in service uh, but the actual hercules itself the c-130 um, for those of you who would like to know uh, first flew on the 23rd of august in 1954 which is uh, a few years ago actually yeah. it's, uh, actually a year after my daddy was born wow. and uh, built by obviously Lockheed Lockheed Martin and um, there has been uh, just over two and a half thousand uh, of uh, of Hercules of these Hercules is built in the years all the different variants going through um, which have been built which are uh, a B E F G H K T uh, uh, J which is obviously the latest mm. version but uh, these these are actually used I mean these are very kind of you know, um, multi-task aircraft. Um, obviously, we also we've all seen them carrying troops and transport cargo and stuff. But these also, um, the C-130E. Um, there's one of these fitted with a fire retardant system. So these are used as well for putting out fires. You know, these big fires that we've seen in the mm. news just lately. And uh, these can also be used for that as well. But um, uh, I've been lucky enough to go go on board one of these. Uh, at Riyadh a few years back, yes. a Hercules, and uh, so, you know it's a fantastic aircraft to go on. It's very similar for those of you who are not kind of in the know. It's mm. it's, it's similar-ish to the the Airbus A four hundred M kind of. It's yeah, a similar same kind same of same aircraft, same, yeah. um, but um, it's more it's more of one of those well-established. I think the C one hundred and thirty. Um, but have you had a chance to go on one of these at all, uh, Nev yourself? No, I'd love to actually. Uh, I like look, these sort of multi-role aircraft, yeah. and uh, no, I'd like to have a go at that uh, one day. That'll They're be, so uh, versatile, awesome. aren't they? I mean, yeah. it's it's it's, it's an ideal aircraft to have in their in their locker, isn't it? For for you know, they're so versatile. There's an awesome video on YouTube of one of uh, of a Hercules taking off on a desert strip runway, mm. and all you can see is dust, dust everywhere, yeah, everywhere. I bet, yeah, I bet, and this yeah. this aircraft just literally just lifts off with it such ease. Fantastic mm. bit of kit. I bet. I bet. So next, uh, the uh, next story then, uh, Nev. Yeah. Uh, this is on the KansasCity.com website, and I hope uh, Matt's going to be able to play a bit of I video yep. as I'm uh, reading this as well. Um, this is uh, about a B-2, uh, refueling a B-2 bomber at 29,000 feet. It's a stunning operation, and the pit crews at this weekend's NASCAR race at Kansas Speedway have nothing on these guys. Uh, the Kansas uh, Air National Guard, 190th Air Refueling Wing, based in Topeka, in a, is a gas station in the sky 
for military aircraft. If you are flying, say, a B-2 bomber and you're within a few hundred miles of the Topeka exit and you're running low on fuel, don't fret. Call the 190th. They'll come and top off your tank. You won't even need to land your plane. Earlier this week, one of the 190th KC-135 refuelling planes went up on a scheduled training flight to refuel three B-2 bombers headed to their home at Whitman Air Force Base near Nobnoster, Missouri. Uh, members of the media were invited along for the ride to observe the process. The process of transferring fuel from one airplane to another is a well-choreographed dance that takes some top-notch flying sk skills and nerves of steel. While the pilot of the air tanker keeps the plane at a steady altitude and speed, the plane taking the fuel cozies up slightly below and behind and is ready for a fill up. On the back of the air tanker is the refueling boom, which serves uh, sort of like the fuel hose at the gas pump. The refueling port for the plane needing uh, refueled uh, is on the top of the plane, easily accessible from the refueling boom. Inside the air tanker, near the tail end of the plane, under its belly, lies the boom operator. He's in charge of guiding the refueling boom into the fuel port on the plane below him. His job is done whilst lying prone and looking out a window uh, at the tail of the aircraft. From uh, the boom operator's perch, the view is spectacular and it gives him a clear look at the incoming customer who he communicates with via radio. Once the boom operator determines the trailing plane is in the correct position, he guides the refueling boom into place using one hand to manipulate small wings on the end of the boom that fly it and the other hand to extend the boom and release the fuel. On this mission, the planes met up at 29,000 feet over Kansas whilst jetting along at speeds that would easily leave uh, in any NASCAR racer in the dust. On the ground, it will, be similarly, it will be similar to transferring fuel from a gas tanker to a race car whilst they speed around the track together. And a uh, pretty spectacular um, yeah, video, less, isn't is. it? Yeah, it is absolutely incredible. It's, uh, I'm, and the thing that blows my mind about any of this is, I mean, turbulence and things is such an issue, isn't it, when, when, you, when it comes to flying these things. Uh, and, and to be able to get that, I mean, I suppose there must be tolerances built in the way that it does it, you know, that. so that it can allow for things like that. But, I mean, just wow. The B2 is such an awesome it bit is, of kit, it is. really, you know. Not being a huge military buff, as we all no, know. No, absolutely. But, it is uh, a beautiful bit of Jonathan kit. Warner is always saying how, how mm. fantastic. And, yeah, we'll definitely have to agree with you, Jonathan, that yep. uh, the B-2 does look really stunning, especially it when it's seen from uh, the yeah. point of a, a refueling uh, operator absolutely there. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. So, moving on then uh, to the round or rounding up the show, I should say. Yeah. So, um, Nev, you are off to uh, um, your trip to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, Mexico. Uh, Brazil, Brazil, uh, sorry, but it's, it's close ish. Um, <laughs> so, but you're sort of so you're yeah. off, to, off to Brazil, and <laughs> um, for the Tomorrow. for the for the benefit of our stalkers, uh, what airline oh, are you nice. flying? <laughs> uh, that's uh, TAP Air Portugal. Oh, Air so Portugal. Star Alliance. Um, points I beg, hang on, whoa, 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 hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I beg your pardon. I, 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 you didn't say the words British and or Airways there, but there are Star no, Alliance. No, they so. they don't fly anywhere near where I'm going. Oh. Um, unfortunately, so. Okay. But uh, I thought I'm going I thought via you were, Lisbon. I guess uh, I thought you planned your holidays yeah. based on where they flew. I thought those were the rules. No, that's me. Well, <laughs> oh, right. See, right. <laughs> if only it was a holiday. But yeah. I'm sure oh, I see. Oh, right. A, uh. a couple of days off, hopefully. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm flying tomorrow, and I arrive uh, in Salvador, which is right on the east coast of uh, Brazil, at about uh, half past nine tomorrow night. Wow. Their local time. What's so, the yeah. uh, equipment of choice then? Uh, are you uh, it's a three twenty to Lisbon, and then a three thirty to um, Salvador. Okay. Uh, all in the cheap seats by the looks of it. So um, um, we will have to see how we get on. This is so, uh, so what going happened, to be very, what very difficult for me. What happens imagine. in this particular situation? Have I got to do a Nev's passenger experience interviewing Nev? Is that how, is that how this is going to work? Thought, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yes. yeah. We do actually have one for you when, when, Nev come, when um, Carlos comes back from his trip, actually, because Gemma is uh, doing a little internal flight she on an is, airline yeah. we don't know about. So mm. uh, uh, we'll have to, we'll have to uh, Skype you oh, in and you'll yeah. You'll have to do a. It's a, cause it's it's fair to say it's not cost a great deal of money. Uh, this flight. No, no it, it's not actually. No. no Are you allowed to say what's occurring? Probably not. Oh no. We're, um, well, basically, what it, obviously those of you listening will know mm. that I'm off to the Dubai Air Show next mm. month, and uh, while we're in 
or while we're in said Dubai, uh, Jammer is going to have a little quick internal flight over to Oman, mm-hmm. which, uh, as some of you will to know, visit friends, yeah. is where some of our friends live in Oman. And um, she has booked uh, on a startup uh, carrier, which only started a few months ago in Oman. And um, she's going to fly uh, on the 45, 50-minute flight hop across to Oman and see them, obviously, with this, uh, with this low-cost carrier. And uh, I think they are using, if I remember rightly, when I looked it up, um, they are using uh, 737-800s. Isn't that the airline that. with the hideous safety record? Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> sorry joking. Of That's okay. Gemma, Gemma, doesn't, Gemma doesn't listen. No. No, no, no. She doesn't listen. But um, so you, you've, bu- you've booked your... Hang on a minute. You've booked your wife on an airline that, that hasn't got a fantastic safety record. Have you just taken out an no, insurance no, no. policy by the, the, air, the airline... <laughs> actually, no, the airline that she's flying on is called Salam Air. Um, and they... Um, Salam th- Air. Salam Air. S-A-L-A-M. Salam right. Air. Okay. See, all I've got is, is sort of, you know, spicy <clears throat> sausage in my head now. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> No, they are. Um, but enough of my personal problems. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, <laughs> there we are. Though they are, um, they're actually, they're actually, uh, like I said, they started operations only a few months back, and um, they run four flights a day from Dubai to Oman and back. And, oh wow! Uh, yeah, they. That's so it's the literally a bus of the skies, essentially. Yeah, yeah. they are. Yeah, they've. Uh, oh, sorry, it's A three twenties. Sorry, I oh, beg your pardon. Bad. They've got uh, three Airbus A three twenties, which they use. Mm. Um, <laughs> I will say that. <laughs> sorry, Jeff just said in the chat room here it's the Italian affiliate Salami Air. Yes, possibly. <laughs> I like it. Very good, Jeff. Well yeah, done. He's possibly yeah. right, there, actually. <laughs> yeah, but, um, absolutely. No, I, I was actually I was talking to Matt before we start the show, mm. and um, we were. Uh, I was talking to Matt about the seating that Gemma was. Pepperami. It's a bit the, of an animal. So, on the aircraft. <laughs> Sorry, I'm watching. I'm not listening to you. I'm reading the chat room. It's hilarious. <laughs> so, and because um, I, I, you can pre-book the seats with Salam Air, mm. and um, when we went to pre-book Gemma's seat, which was actually the last seat. Uh, at the back of the aircraft mm. well, not the last seat because none of them were taken no okay um, so it's obviously going to be a full flight right <laughs> with no one on it apart from okay, Gemma okay good lovely um, she'll so, like that so yeah. Gemma being Gemma <laughs> wanted the very last seat at the back of the aircraft right at the very very back of the aircraft right. so she doesn't get lost for some bizarre reason okay. don't ask me why right. okay um, and it cost and it cost, and it, cost uh, it cost Gemma a whole 40 these. pence 40 pence to um, <laughs> really pick the seat wow um, and uh, actually, the the expensive seats, the mm-hmm. the more yeah the uh, the more posher seats near um, more legroom and stuff like that, overwing exit seats mm. were two pounds. Right. Okay. Extortionate then. Yeah. Yes. To, to book those, okay. so she opted for the for the uh, forty pence ones uh, at the back. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> So yeah, should we fly with Salam Air <laughs> or Salami Air, as Salami I shall now Air, call as, it? As for the, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ironically, they are now talking about uh, Jeff. I'm not reading that comment out. Um, <laughs> there, honestly, there there are such mi- bad, badly behaved people in the chat room this evening. Uh, yes, it's all right. They're all talking about food now. That's my. I might have to wield my blue spanner if it gets. I think you might have to. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Nev's going to whip out his. Blue spanner of death. So Nev, you're yeah. not you're not going to try and uh, you're not going to try and get yourself a little um, cheeky, um, obviously because like, we all know you, you you're you're a host of PTUK, so you should basically be upgraded oh, to, to, yeah. to business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see. Uh, I haven't had any <laughs> sensible Star Alliance points for for okay. years, and right. so um, I, I used to have a gold SAS uh, card many many years ago. But um, yeah, I've not been fl- flying with Scandinavian for ages. So um, I have did a bit of obviously United flying, uh, so a few Star Alliance points there, but not. Not many, so we'll no. have to see how we get on. Oh, well, I hope okay. you have a good time anyway. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Nev, yeah. Well, I, I'm delighted to say I'm sure we'll hear all about it so very soon. Next then, Matt, because you are off to oh, yeah. New York yeah, in a couple very of weeks soon, time, in a couple yeah. of weeks' time. Mm. And, uh, me, and, me and Owen. Yeah, you and Owen, you're going to meet up uh, over there and you're going to have some fun. And yeah, obviously it's a business trip, aren't it, for you? It is, yeah. Officially, I'm officially. Actually, believe it or not, I'm actually going for work, believe it or not. But uh, Owen is uh, has got some holiday that he needs to, to use up before 
before the end of the year. So he's uh, coming out to New York as well. I uh, I think Owen's there from the 1st, and he leaves on the 10th. So that's uh, I'm not sure what day. I know the 10th is the Friday uh, in November. I fly out on the 3rd of November. Uh, no, it's the 4th to the 11th. I can't even get my own dates. You're, so, basically, yeah. you're away. I'm Saturday I'm to away. Saturday. I'm away Saturday to Saturday. Uh, so I, th- I fly out on the 4th of November, coming home on the 11th of November. Um, and I'm hoping to meet up with a few of our American friends uh, while I'm there. Uh, and we haven't quite worked out what day we're going to do things. That's a little chat we're going to have because uh, we're going to try and do a live show um, because all of us, I rather strangely... Twitter. You're going to obviously put stuff on Twitter so people can sort of find out where you're going to possibly oh, have meetups and stuff. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right mm. then. Apparently that's why I got... Look, look I, I, I do this tech. I don't do that tech. <laughs> Okay, right. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, have we set a date yet? No is the short answer. I don't, I don't know. So we're, we're all going to have a little bit of a chat, I think, after the show and just try and yeah. work out. But I'm there from the 4th to the 11th. And my e- the evenings basically are my own, uh, more or less. So uh, if you are in the New York area, I am in the middle of New York. Uh, I think we established when we stay there. And I, I've forgotten the name of the hotel. But uh, anybody who is who is in the States and wants to meet up, I'm there between the 4th. Or let's say between the 4th and the 10th because I fly home uh, lunchtime Saturday on the 11th. So, uh, and on the subject of meeting Matt in New York, uh, can I just point out that anyone who does uh, meet up with Matt, um, he has said that he will quite generously buy anyone uh, a tap water that they want right. from uh, from Empire. Okay, I'll buy you a bottle. No, I, I I will buy you a bottled water. How does that sound? Yeah, I'm really yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So uh, yes, yeah, so I'm actually going out there for work. So there are two yeah. days uh, during the day, which is. Uh, the uh, Thursday and the Friday I'm actually there for a trade show for my new job and my trade show uh, is selling uh, pet cards and basically. refresh our memories as to who you're flying with uh, to New York this time oh, really do I have to say that out loud in public mm. uh, United oh okay <laughs> <laughs> but I have checked I'm not on a 737 no I'm on a 767 this time oh okay yeah, that'll yeah, be yeah, a lot yeah. better so, uh, yeah. it, will it I don't know just drop <laughs> just drop the BC, Brian Coleman. When you when you board the aircraft, just say excuse no, me. I want to get I on. Know. I don't want them. To, I don't want them to boot me off. So that's fine. Yes. Yeah, so oh. I, I'm quite looking forward uh, to 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 that. So it's going to be some good yeah. fun. So seriously, guys, if you are in the area, uh, it would be lovely to uh, see you. Uh, I say I'm going to be staying in New York. Uh, if you are up for meeting, if you send us a message, a, a direct message through Twitter, uh, or send us a message by the email. Actually, do it by email. That's probably easier. And it send it to podcast at plain talking uk dot com and we will make uh, we will make contact and if I'm in the area we'll sort it out uh, uh, no I'm not in business class sadly Jordan I wish I wish oh well it's the <laughs> the Dubai Air Show I will be there on the 12th yes so okay, if anyone so if, if, any, if there is there. anyone in the UAE who is off to the Dubai yep. Air Show this year or anyone at all any of our listeners mm. off to the Dubai Air Show I'll be there on the 12th which is a Sunday and Nev's working so I don't know, I don't know if you'll be allowed to meet up with them if you happen to be in the area but uh, <laughs> That's a thought, isn't it? Yes, um, yes. it's going to be a, a bit of a hectic schedule, but uh, well, I'm, I'm going to be in the Salvador for the whole week. So, um, yeah, well, if anyone yeah. would like to uh, give me a shout on Twitter, <laughs> yeah, do. Jordan, say bummer, don't they know who you are? No, you're quite right; they don't know who I am, and I intend to keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. but uh, yeah, so it should be a lot of fun. So yeah, so it, it sort of, sort of oh, beginning Brian's of November. Asked you a question in the chat oh, room, he? Matt. Oh, uh, do you know the fair basis of your ticket? No. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand. Uh, we'll we'll chat later, Brian. I think that's <laughs> so the way. We'll chat yeah. Later. yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that means. What what do, 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 do you know what that means? No, you're not flying business Neville class. Neville knows. Won't he? Neville knows. What does that uh, mean? Uh, yeah, but it's basically whether whether it's a um, <clears throat> a flexibility on the ticket or how much oh. you paid for it. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, that kind of thing. So. Um, oh, yeah. I see. Uh, no, in that case, uh, I think it's just a standard, a standard, just an ordinary ticket. I don't think it's flexible. Mm. Um, yeah, if I if I if I know uh, what's going on, because there are quite a few of us going, uh, so I would imagine it will have been whatever is considered the cheapest option. I think, to be fair, but fair uh, play. yeah, fair play, yeah. <laughs> So we are going to start to wrap up the show then. Don't forget, if you want to send us any feedback at all to the show, because we Indeed. do want to hear what you sound like. We can yep. see what you look like mm. in the chat room. Well, we yes. can kind of see the little pictures on the icons. Yeah, which is nice. But uh, to anyone who's listening to the show via the mm-hmm. uh, the audio show, which is on 
iTunes and various platforms. Mm. Send us some voice feedback or any kind of feedback, emails or anything. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and uh, know know what your sort of kind of experience. Very much have been so. Yeah, with do airlines. please actually. We'd love to hear your Nev's passenger experiences actually via email as well. Where can they be... send their emails to, Matt? It is podcast at plaintalkinguk.com. That's podcast at plaintalkinguk.com. Our social media networks. You find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash plain talking uk you can send us a message or an audio message through there as well so no excuse mm. you can even do it using your mobile and of course our twitter handle it's at plain talking uk website www.plaintalkinguk.com sounds good so nev have you got an Hi. exciting weekend <laughs> planned <laughs> that's it surprise him with no any, question any any award ceremonies this weekend or are you uh no, 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 I, i'm just off to uh, terminal two heathrow tomorrow morning Ooh. uh quite early for me flight to oh. lisbon and then to salvador so that's uh, good that's what i should be doing indeed well we wish him all good. the best yeah, for his absolutely. trip don't we have yeah. a great and don't forget uh, nev um Duty free, really? Well, you know, a bottle of scotch or right? Oh yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I think Nev gives enough. <laughs> I think bless him with all his technical assistance to me. Never mind your personal needs. I, I shall yeah. be I shall be bringing back everyone some dates. Right, well, everyone in the chat room, brilliant. Oh, yeah. they'll be really pleased about yeah. that. Yeah. We're going to do a date segment oh. on the show. Are we? What, no, no food what, what, dates. What, is, is that like speed dating? <laughs> what? I, I I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> We used to have a free date with every T-shirt, I think. Yeah, mm, I think we, we should do. wrap up now before all of us end up in terrible <laughs> trouble. Uh, <laughs> so that is where we're going to bring episode one oh, one, two, uh, 187. Right. Blimey, <laughs> get ahead of myself here. Um, don't forget, just a quick reminder, there are two spaces left for the 200th show Ooh. on January the 20th next year. That is two mm. places left. If anyone is listening and wants to join yep. us in London at the simulator to have a yep. go at flying the 737-800, sim yep. at mp simulations don't forget get in contact mm. with us via email yeah, very quickly very quickly uh, like i yeah. said two spaces left and then that, uh, that will be it for that so uh, yeah get in touch with us via the usual means so any last words from you mr bounds before you jet no, off just uh, look forward to um uh hopefully meeting up with you again on yep. the skype if the old uh, bandwidth holds up nicely next friday uh but uh, yeah once again a great show packed a lot into it uh, today as well. <laughs> we did <laughs> absolutely so, we indeed. did indeed. It's been yeah. It's going to the editing is going to be a bit challenging. But hey, I've got mm. a new laptop, so all is well. <laughs> uh, so I will speak to you all. We will all speak, speak to, to you. you. Not just me. Uh, well, there is a next show Friday. I'm doing next. When 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 am I doing a show on my own again? Oh, that, but um, that's the week uh, after that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, no, it is next Friday. Because you're you're doing DJing, aren't you? No, no, no. I'm not working now on the Friday. Only the Saturday. That got cancelled. Oh, the Friday did. Oh, okay, so I'm so, not on my own then. No. Oh, that's all right then. Oh, there we no, are. Phew. You're not on your own. Phew, everyone. <laughs> you're not on your own. <laughs> oh, phew. All right, guys. Uh, I w- we w- we will all see you. <laughs> Ah, see, I'd, I'd been, I've been rehearsing this because I was going to be here on my own. I don't know what no, to do. No, anyway, from all of us here in the studio and the legend that is Nev, say goodbye, Nev. See you guys. Take care. Have Take nice care. Week. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Woohoo.